Hi internet friends, my name is John and in this video I'll be talking to you about two brand new concepts that were introduced within Embraco V8 and that is the component and the composer. Yes, as a back-end developer, these will be your go-to tools whenever you want to customize Embraco and make it bend to your will. So in this video, we'll take a deep dive into these two concepts because it's actually quite important understanding how they work and how you can make use of them. This is episode eight of my series of how to build a website using Embraco V8. If you want to learn about Embraco and you like the series, please hit that subscribe button right now. Before we get onto the code, I'll quickly explain some of the theory behind all of this. Now on any single project, it is very likely that you're going to want to customize how Embraco boots up or maybe how the request pipeline is configured. Now, traditionally, you would do all of these sort of tasks within the global ASCX. So for example, let's imagine you want to register a custom route. You would create a route config within the global ASCX and register it. However, in V8, it is no longer recommended to do anything whatsoever in the global ASCX, and now it is considered bad practice. So instead, we've got these two new concepts of component and composer. So a component is a way to allow you to add in customizations and a composer is a way to register those things. So what we're talking about here is running code before we hit to our controllers. So the type of things we're talking about is maybe enabling cores, enabling attribute routing. Maybe you want to hook into the CMS event pipeline. So when someone publishes a page in the CMS, you want some custom functionality to run. So it's all of these backend tasks. And this is where components and composers come into play. An Umbraco application is a composition made up of different collections. Composing is a term used to describe the process of curating which pieces of functionality should be included in a particular collection. The code that implies these choices startup is called a composer. Now that is a bunch of techno jargon if I've ever heard it. I've taken that saying from the official Umbraco documentation and yes, it's very difficult to understand what it means. So in very simple terms, when a Braco boots up, it needs to do loads of stuff. Historically, all this stuff was registered using base classes from the global SAX. This is how a lot of applications work. However, the Embraco team wants to follow better coding principles. So they want to follow things like the solid principle and the open close principle. So to create a better architecture, they've moved away from register everything in the global SAX and instead they've created this um, notion of composers and components. So there are three types of composers within Embraco. The initial composer, which is split into web and core initial composers. This is all the stuff that Embraco does to register itself. So when you call a web page, it works. When you call the CMS, it loads up. All that good stuff like registering database calls, all that sort of stuff is done in there. The core composers, this is where we do the middleware stuff. Again, this is all core and Braco stuff, so they don't really care about it. This is where the model builder gets registered. This is where the log um, provider gets registered. Finally, in the execution stack, we get to the part that we care about. We get to user composers. So as the name sort of implies, user composers are for users to use. Amazing name. And this is where we'll be focusing our efforts today. So we'll be creating a number of components and register them using composers and we'll go over how to do that and all the different attributes and secrets that you can use to make things run smooth. Let's start off talking about one thing that all developers will care about. What happens when things go tits up and how do you figure things out? So on the screen in front of me, I've got a component that's failing. This is the message that you're likely seeing. You'll have a boot failed error at the top. In the stack trace, you should be able to see which component is failing. So as you can see here, mine is called component one and it's the initialize method. So opening up Visual Studio, you can see I have a component called component one. We know it's component because it implements this I component. Now in here, I've actually thrown an error on purpose. So if I delete that and rebuild, what we can then do is call that. And while that's loading, I'll talk you through what this component's doing. So as you can see, and I mentioned, we're implementing this I component. This has two methods that you'll need to implement. Initialize, this is called when the application is starting up, and terminate. Terminate is called when the application is cooling down. Now in general, you can ignore terminate, just leave it blank. In my component, I'm actually using dependency injection. So I'm using Umbraco Context Factory and the logger. Now this is actually a really important consideration. Because components are loaded right at the beginning of the application, sometimes the HTTP context will not exist. 
So this means that if you're trying to use dependency injection with a component and you see some weird error message and you get a boot message, you might need to think about what you're passing in and potentially change it. Again, if you're hitting these problems, then you might need to think about using a attribute or something on a controller rather than using a component. So in my initialize, I'm using the ensure and bracket context. I'm calling the home page and I'm getting the title and I'm just logging that. So this is just more to prove to you that you can access these things. So as you can see, scrolling in on my logs here, I'm rendering out the page's title, which is home. And then also if I go back to our web page now, you can see everything's loaded. Perfect. As I mentioned earlier, a component on its own is pretty useless and Abraco won't process it. It's kind of like a vegetarian in a meat eating competition. It will sit around and do nothing useful. What we'll need to do is get our component registered with a composer. As I was saying earlier, you'll need to use the I use composer. And on the screen right in front of us, you can see I've got one of those. So we've got this register dependencies. It's implementing I use composer. I use composer will make you implement the compose method when we have composition. So in here, we'll have the register property. Register will allow you to register a dependency with light inject, which is the dependency, um, dependency injection framework. We'll also have access to this components method. And this is a enumerable list and we can add in our components. So as you can see here, I've added in my component one and that's the reason why it's getting loaded. When you are working on a typical Umbraco project, it is very likely that you will want to create multiple user composers. When you're doing this, the order in which the composers execute might become important to you. So for example, you've seen that I have this register dependencies component, composer, and in here I'm registering all the dependencies and doing all the DI for the project. Now imagine in composer one, I would actually wanted to inject one of those dependencies if this composer hadn't run, I'm going to bump into an error. And this is where these compose before and compose after attributes actually come in handy. As you can see, all you need to do is pass in the type of a composer and then you can order the execution. Now this isn't ideal. There is it possible to do a slight nuanced bug with this. So imagine in here we have compose before and it's reliant on composer two. In composer two, we're saying it's reliant on composer one. When we go to the website, you'll see that we have this boot failed error and we've got this cyclic dependency. So obviously it's useful that Umbraco tells us that we have an error, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, we've also got two other nuanced attributes which you may want to be aware of. So we've got this disabled attribute and this will disable a composer. So on its own, this is pretty useless because why would you ever write some code and disable it at the same time? However, if you're using a third party package, or you want to change the, the functionality of a third party package, potentially you might want to introduce this composer and disable the default package. I haven't really used this, but it's worth knowing about. We also have this runtime level. Now runtime level basically will mean that the composer will not be executed until Umbraco has fully booted up and has everything it needs to run. If you're trying to create a composer and you're trying to do some database stuff or you're trying to talk to you know, the bracket context or something and you're having issues, it's worth trying to add this attribute on. Now for a used composer, this is decorated by default, but say you're trying to create your own core composer, then this might be useful. Again, it's nuanced, you'll probably never, never need to bump into it, but it's worth knowing about. There is an alternative way of creating a used composer. I'll quickly walk you through this alternative method now. Now on the screen, we've got the approach that we've already gone through. We're implementing from I user composer. We've got our compose method. We've got access to the components collection and we're adding this component called register settings component into it. Now I've also created this additional composer and this time instead of implementing from I user composer, I'm inheriting from component composer and I'm passing in the type of component which is the same register settings component. I'm also throwing this I use composer at the end. Now this class here and this class here, they're doing exactly the same thing. However, I think we can agree that this class uses less code. Now for me, I prefer to use this I use composer approach. I will tend to register multiple things within one class to make life easier. However, if it makes you a lot more happier to create a composer per component, 
knock yourself out, you can use this approach, they're both valid, up to you. Do what makes you happy. Within a user composer, we'll have access to register multiple things. So we've already talked about dependency injection and light inject. So using register, we can add in and register controllers, or we can map interfaces to concrete types. I'll potentially talk about this in another video. We also have access to the components collection that we've mentioned. You also have access to content apps. So if you want to register and create your own content app, you also have access to content finders. This can allow you to do some cool special routing. If you want to customize the Embraco backend and create a custom dashboard, you can do that using the dashboards collection. And finally, you can also add in some data editors. So as you can see in a composer, you can actually register multiple things. There is definitely more to components and composers than meets the eye at first glance. And I'm hoping that this deep dive video has given you the confidence and understanding of how you can go off and build anything that your heart's desire wants within Embraco. Now, if you enjoyed this content, this is uh, just an episode in my series of how to build something within Embraco V8. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these deep dive videos. If you'd like to learn Embraco in a different format, I have written a book. It is called Umbraco Secrets Exposed. It's only $9.99. It's available on LeanPub. Go over there. It is a work in progress. However, buying a book supports my website. It goes towards hosting costs. So I would appreciate any um, purchases. If you want to do me a solid as well, then hit that like button. Hitting like just helps the YouTube algorithm show my videos to more people. So if you want to be a legend, do that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this content. Hope you have an amazing day. Happy coding.